All right. Good evening. Good evening. So we got a text from Manny, I guess, his mother's in the hospital. Do we know what's wrong or what the issue is? Father, bless tonight. We thank you for it. Uh, Lord, uh, there's several prayer requests that uh, were, let's see, requisitioned, brought up. And uh, I thank you for the liberty you've given us to be able to pray about all that, lift them up to you, pray for Manny's mom and whatever situation she may be in. They, you have mercy and grace with that, for wisdom, if you will. Pray you'd meet with uh, us this evening. Thank you for those that came out and uh, for the traveling mercies, Lord, and all the health issues that are going on and every other prayer request that we have brought out during our prayer service. Brought up, rather, and uh, we just thank you again for being good to us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the blessed hope. Pray you come soon. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, look at Ephesians chapter 1, and uh, we're talking about the devil, Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. We've already recognized quite a bit about him. I think last week we put out these little boxes and made little check marks about our level of progress with our study on this character. I don't know that a lot of people really understand them. I'm reading about them. I'm trying to research about them. I've read through this Bible several times. I picked up on the fact that he shows up in Genesis 3. He's your adversary. There are many warnings about the character. God will do what he can to show you, to help you, to guide you, direct you away from him, be able to stand, right, when he fires these levels of temptation, and these fiery darts and different things like that, right? And, uh... But I don't know, man. You got to just keep on keeping on with that. And we say this many times. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, right, and revelation in the knowledge of him. What are you looking for? Uh, that's that speaker. Here it is. Yeah. See the word revelation? All right, so that the God and our Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Because without that, you wouldn't know about God. You wouldn't have an idea. And we say this, we've said this many times, that God is a God of revelation. He reveals himself to you. Okay, so if that's the idea, then, you know, is there, is there... Like, is there a case to where that revelation is cut off, or maybe he stops showing himself, revealing himself to you? When you read the Gospels, you'll find that the Lord sees what's going on in the crowd, and if he feels that those people aren't doing right, he'll go the other way, and he makes himself unavailable. Proverbs chapter 1 tells you that, you know, wisdom being personified as this female, but this dual application with the it being likened unto the Lord, trying to pour out his wisdom and understanding to make known his words unto us, that he can call us out, right? And then you have that choice to say, you know what? I got so much going on on my phone and my video games and I got all this going on that I'm not going to prioritize uh, the ability, necessity to know him more. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Look at verse 3. And so that's why you could sit in a room full of people and then you could have the exact same message being preached and then some people take it this way, some people take it that way. Part of your criticism against the church and Christians is that, oh, you guys say one thing here and then we go up the road and they say something else. Well, there's one standard and if you're doing it right, then you and I get the same interpretation, right? So that Bible would say this Bible is not of any private interpretation. And I'll show you with this character, Lucifer, and we'll, we'll study a little bit about this, this Leviathan character in Job chapter 41. And you'll see that, well, if I'm reading what this is and you're reading what that is, one says that, well, you know, that's the devil characteristics. We won't go through the entirety of chapter 41. But then you see, well, like, well, the other group say, you know what, that's just some mythological character and it's figurative and whatever, and it's kind of like God's enemies or the Jews' enemies and different things like that. And they're like, wow, that's like night and day difference, see? 
That's why it's very important, again, to get to the people that uh, will help you. And the Holy Spirit of God will help you. And then you got other people filled with the Holy Spirit of God that have got to the point in their life where they believe that God wrote a book and he preserved it. We are dealing with that, too. There could be guys asking questions at the men's home about how would you know. And we need to be in a position to be able to explain how we can have confidence, right, when all this is going on and this is going on and that's happening, that you could still do what you got to do anyway, right, without being sidetracked and getting caught up with the strongholds. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3. How that by revelation, see, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in, in few words. See the word revelation. Look at Galatians chapter 1, look at verse 12. There's that. I get it, Lord. Like, can you show me? That's why if you do read your Bible, can I give you a little bit of advice? Ask the God who wrote it to, 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 to reveal it. How about that? The guy that put it together, the God, the Godhead that was responsible, right? Say, Lord, yep. I don't, I don't know a lot of this stuff, but I'll tell you. Well, I could get some, which is really neat over the course of time. Like if you do put forth the effort to get to know God Almighty the way you're supposed to get to know God Almighty, and then hence everything, like you put him first, and then he helped you with the rest. You know, you love God with your whole, what is that, mind, soul, body, or all that stuff. Galatians chapter 1, look at verse 12. For I have neither received it a man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So without the biblical light, right, and understanding, revelation of that book that's done through that Holy Spirit that you have, that's in you, interestingly enough, right? So you're like the only religion in the world that the God that you worship actually lives inside of you at the same time. Like the, the, uh, all the people, they don't, that, the Allah ain't in them. And then if not, then sadly what happens is you get left to yourself, right? So look at look at Job chapter 41, right? And we'll peel back a little bit of this. Remember, it's our responsibility to be able to search the matter out. God will do certain things on purpose to see and try you, and that's normal. It would be like everything else that you go through in life. If you're gonna if you're gonna get an advancement at work, I, I promise you, unless you you're in some kind of crooked setup, it would be that that if you were going, you could probably interview it. But before you're considered for it, somebody's having a conversation about you. Matter of fact, before that that opening is posted, they're already want they already know who they want. I know I did, and you know I, I want who I want. If if, if I got to give account to corporate. On the way I run this program, I, I don't care that you're the one telling me who I need to have to be that person, right? So it was like that with my boss. When he asked me, which was a super big honor, to be able to go to be his deputy in Arkansas since we were branching out into a new state, like I was excited to the fact. I thought it interesting that I would be leaving like that. However, we prayed about it. He told me that. He said, so Barnett, what do you think of Arkansas? I'm like, man, I don't even know where Arkansas is at. Like, is it above Texas or something like that? And he says, oh, I already know you're going to tell me you got to pray about it. And so go home with your wife and talk to your kids because you got you to gotta get a, we're going to, the company's going to back up with you all. And you're going to go, we're going to have to move, right? And I prayed. I did pray. I asked my pastor. We did talk. It wasn't a secret. We didn't, we didn't, we weren't like one of Baltimore Colts leave at night you know like they loaded up the truck right the browns or whatever that was they disappeared and they became the baltimore ravens however that was and we do things 52 face up if you get to that point with your level of maturity it could be that you're just getting older and you see it but what we experience as adults is there's so much of, of lack of maturity with the things that you do and your experience, right, and you're part of, and it's very nice to be around people that are half honest about what how they do their business, right, and will tell you the truth about it. And then, and here's here's a novel idea, right? It'll be that they actually care about you because you're like, when I hear that, I still don't. I'm still so jaded with the way things gone down over the years, man. I don't trust nothing. And my wife's like, you know, you gotta you gotta trust the Lord that there are really good people that that God put together and that's why i think that's church though ain't it though isn't that the definition all right yeah thank you 
guy. Looky, looky, uh, looky, 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 looky. Yeah, they were all like to my boss, Todd, you taking Barnett up there? You sure? And it was like, uh, yeah, he was the one because I could sleep. I, I didn't understand what that meant at first. I, I got it now because I, now I get why they do certain things. Anyway, we get into all that. So I thank God for my boss. His name was Todd Spade, one of my favorite guys in the world. Anyway, uh, Job chapter 41, verse 1. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with the thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? And then without getting into the the entire chapter is just there's just so many things about this guy here that it was like at first like so who would this character be and what you'll find is that there are different interpretations about a lot of who this character is right so the apostate fundamentalists and conservative convert leviathan into some kind of crocodile or hippopotamus or some elephant right in henry morris's case he calls it a dinosaur, right? Well, they ignore the cross-references. And, and, and again, I need you to uh, understand that, that concept of a cross-reference. So, like, if you're online, you have links, right? You guys, younger people should get that. And you click into this little blue word on what you're reading, and then it'll take you over here. And then you click over there, and then there'll be some more little blue words, and you click over there. And then once the little finger shows up, right, because you got a little arrow, once it turns into a finger, you can go somewhere else. And then before you know it, you're like, man, let me get back to this because I lost place where I was at. And you go backwards, and then and it goes all the way back. Your, your Bible's that. And what you whoever put this, however they put this Bible together, they put it together in such a way that you could read this and then, and then to validate the, the doctrinal part of that, the theology behind a lot of that, the teachings behind a lot of that, there'll usually be a lot of different verses that support that. Right? And it'd be like, well, there's no rapture in the Bible. The term rapture is not in the Bible. Right? Sunday school's not in the Bible either, but, but they don't see the Bible. The word Bible's not in the Bible. But the act of catching people away is certainly in the Bible. The act of studying your Bible, Scripture... Is certainly in your Bible, right? And it talks about that. So you could strain at a gnat. Or you could swallow a camel and strain at a gnat, right? So I've seen a lot of that there. So there's these cross references, according to this here is 70 Psalm 74, 14, where Leviathan has multiple heads. So if that's the case, and and I want to show you a few things before we get too deep into this Leviathan character, you can know about as much as you want to know about what God has for you. But it will all depend on the heart that you have. So this is the only book that's ever written that depends on the heart of the reader as as to how much you get up out of it. Like I said before, it'd be like Joshua, right? And they went over there and spied out the land, and he had two distinctly different reports. And one group was all discouraged and upset of the fact and said, we can't do it. And then the other ones were like, yeah, we could do this. We could do all that. And, and I would encourage you in your walk, after you trust Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, you need to earnestly and fervently pray about being around the right group of people because there's two camps. There are those, you could say the pessimists or the optimists, right? Half full, half empty group of people. And there's a balance to all that, right? So you have to make sure as far as your walk, you are going to be responsible for how you handle things. God presents it, right, in one form or another, whether it's through your Bible whether it's through conversations, whether it's through preaching or teaching, right? And then what you do with it, because you want to, whatever's being presented, somehow that should be able to fit in your daily walk, like whatever it is. So what part will Leviathan fit then, Pastor? I don't know, he's a devil, dude. You don't, you don't think you haven't felt that? You haven't felt like, so you think Leviathan means seven, seven head, a deal come, multiple heads come and knocking out the door? I don't know that. See, I've said this before here. I don't know the devil come hunting us at victory. But you think like if you start reading them Bibles and you read about the many, I could get there and find out that there are like two, three thousand of those things being put in these pigs after God 
Jesus Christ cast them out of the maniac? You think they ever bother you? You ever have weird thoughts? I mean, so you've been saved, right? You'd be, yep. And you trusted Jesus Christ? Uh-huh. So you never had them weird thoughts? So like, I'm the only one that has them weird thoughts? And I'd be saved. I'd be preaching that weird thoughts. But you don't? See? So I don't think it's the, the dragon coming after me. I think they're devils. See? The Holy Scripture clearly identifies Leviathan in, in Isaiah chapter 27. Go to Isaiah 27. And then look at verse 1. And, and there you go. There's your cross, cross references. Isaiah 27, verse 1. Isaiah 27. And then that's why when we have this Bible, where the word of a king is, there's power. And boy, America used to have the power. Boy, you don't much anymore. All right, look at verse 1. Isaiah 27, verse 1. We had brought this up a couple times already. But let's, let's make sure we keep the con and things in perspective and context. In that day, the Lord, with a sore and great and strong sword, shall punish. There's a, there's that name, Leviathan. And then he explains who the the the, the Leviathan. He doesn't say no alligator. He says he's a piercing serpent. Now, where'd you get serpent from? Like, could you catch that? So you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I've heard the serpent before. And then what's neat about your walk with Jesus Christ uh, is that revelation stuff I was talking about, right? It'd be the things like, oh wow. And so we're at the men's home, and I'm trying to give illustrations to these young people here that don't really understand much of much. They don't understand much of much, much of anything. And I had the little light switch there, and I explained that the Word of God's like and on the light. And then and I turned the light switch on. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you open up the Word. See, the outside of the Word is dark. And then you open it up. There's your light. And it's that. And I, I can't tell you how cool it is. How neat it is. If you just get alone with God, get yourself some coffee or whatever you want. And gummy bears are good. Gummy bears. I pay the extra for the real ones. They got the, the great value ones. They're all right, but you pay a little extra for the, the good ones. It's like my favorite fruit. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, man, and then the Lord started talking back with you, man. He started showing you different things in your Bible, and you get a little highlighter. And you start underlining stuff. And before you know it, you got notes in your Bible for the first time. Like, be like, I got notes, right? So what's that, Pastor? Go we'll talk to you. Verse 1. In that day, and with his sore and great and strong sword, right? That'd be what to you today? That would be your King James Bible, wouldn't it? All right? Shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, the crooked serpent. And he shall slay the what? The dragon, right? That's in the sea. And, you know, we'll... We'll get into all that sea stuff. We had actually got into that. It's your firmament up there, right? And and you'll see, go back to Job chapter 41. And you'll see that that these guys, because they don't trust the word, they, they haven't been taught right. So they have these Bibles that take out words like study and rightly dividing. And there's no promise in Psalms chapter 12. So you'd be in a church with 50 people in it and then have five different versions of the Bible out there. And it's confusion. Like, your school doesn't operate that way. So if you go into an English class, there's not 10 different editions of the English class. I can't imagine. Ain't no, there's not. I, I was a teacher. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I was one. We didn't do that. This was that. And the, the, the 10th graders had this one book for Bible, and then there was a little textbook there. And then the 11th graders had this one, and 9th graders had that one, and, and, and had a number or letter on it. And we made sure so that we minimized the confusion that everybody had the same textbook, and then we had a King James Bible. And when we memorized scripture, like the first week I was there, you know, the first year I was there, you know, the first earlier parts of that, man, it was like the first first memory verse that we had in there. There must have been 10 versions. And I, I you know, our teachers, we got to sit them and grade it. Man, I was trying to figure out what, and enough, enough of that, man. I was, we got one, and I made sure I wrote it in, whatever we call that. What do they call that? Syllabus, yeah, that's good. You're smart, and I put it right up in there, man. For 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 the purposes of tests, quizzes, and memory verses, you have one final authority, and it'll be a King James Bible. And and I have a few. Only the last year did it really boil up to where I started getting all these weird deals. Up to that, nobody. Yeah, I know, right? I got it. Well, they didn't use that term, by the way. 
Anyway, I never get that term handed to me. They give me money. Okay, I guess if I got to go. Uh, anyway, all right. Uh, he says the Holy Spirit clearly identifies, right, Leviathan, right, in Isaiah chapter 27, and then uh, he's there again in, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. The animal described is whatever it is, without getting into all this tonight, he's aquatic, right? So he, he that's where they, oh, man, well, the Leviathan must be a sea monster and stuff. And there lies where you got to make sure you know, half know what you're talking about and where you better make sure that God helps you with that. Because once you start getting into like, and I'll show you the way they describe this Leviathan character. Once you start getting into the fantasy and the fairy tales and stuff, see, it'll be you coming in and saying, no, that's the devil. The next guy said, ah, oh, it's just a fairy tale. And then you got to get into, well, who keeps questioning what God said? And then you would get back into the crooked serpent, right? Wouldn't it be that? It would be that. It would be Leviathan. It would be the devil. And then you start putting the pieces together and realize, man, that's that, right? And, and I'll show you that. All right, so here, let me give you this aquatic animal. Whatever he is, he's some kind of aquatic animal, right? And I get that. I get where they probably get that, you know, not real sure about what he is. However... If you pray about it, and then God's the God of revelation, isn't he? Yep. And you got yourself a good little Bible-believing church, right? Uh-huh. You want to learn about it? And you'd be like, yes. And then, like, my only deal would be like, all right, you got to show up. All right? Oh, we got the video things that Kyle puts up there. All right, so, he, so here's this, right? So, uh... Leviathan. Here's definition one. Here I, I took. I, I went online, right? When I was prepping this stuff here, and you tell me what you say it is, and boy, they're all over the map. And I did find crack. That's a crocodile, dude. You don't got no multiple heads that I've ever seen. I've seen enough crocodiles living in Okeechobee, man, to know that there, there's a lot of things you could say about them. They ain't got that. And there's a lot more characteristics in here. Whoever's in here, that ain't no crocodile, certainly ain't no hippopotamus, man. I don't know where you're getting all that. So they say this, Leviathan is a mystical sea serpent, right, uh, in the Hebrew Bible. It is mentioned in several books, such as Psalms, Job, Isaiah, and Amos. It is a symbol. He's going to give you a definition. I'm going to give you a definition. And then it'd be like, well, they say, don't worry about it. It's a hippopotamus. They say, don't worry about it, Pastor. It's just an alligator, ain't what all. It's a sea monster, a mythical sea monster. You don't have to worry about it, right? And I'm telling you, this character here, you need to concern yourself about him. And if it wasn't for the fact that the devil's brought up, remember I said that term dragon, just dragon, not dragons, plural. Dragon itself is 18 times in your Bible. And we read in Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1, he's telling you who this Leviathan deal is. He's the dragon. And then when you read the book of Revelation, he'll explain it. There's enough in that Bible to show you exactly if you say, well, you're not wrapping your head around a fire-breathing dragon with, like, multiple heads. All right, how about a snake? You say, I don't know. Well, what about a, what about, what about a, uh, a man-eating lion coming after you to be able to come find you to eat you? And the more you start reading this Bible and understanding your your ability to be able to, 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 I don't know, man, are you not like, you know, like every day begins and ends, right? And you, you would say things like, there's another day in the book. Like, so if you're at work, they definitely track your work schedule. If you're expected to be paid at the end of your, your pay cycle, there's somebody in your corporate office that knows exactly when you check in and when you check out. If you're a student, they're checking whether or not you're here that day. And if I get it right, boy, wouldn't they be to wouldn't they make kids, Lorena, that don't have the right amount of days come to Sunday school, uh, Sunday school, summer school to make up days that you didn't come to school? Would they <clears throat> make you come to sun, summer school for missing too many days during the course of the year? <clears throat> you want me to answer that for you? Would they, would that school you go to, if you miss too many days during the course of the year, would they make you come to summer school to make them up? The heck yeah, right? They do that. You know how they do that? They just track that. So if everybody's showing you in the world, you got a medical record, right? If you got kids, you take them to. If you got one, they'll pull your record. 
if you got, God forbid, you got a criminal record, man, when you get pulled over, if you were to get pulled over on the way out of here, they're going to run your plates. They're going to run this number. They're going to run that number. If you got a house number, they got all sorts. If you live in a homeowners association, they know exactly, you know, whether or not those fees are being paid off or there's specific violations within your homeowner association and you painted your house, you know, lime green when they told you not to. Man, don't think you're going to sell it like that because if you try to sell it, they got to lean on your house. But everybody would agree that there's some type of record or some kind of tracking. Your cell phone tracks you. My cell phone knows I'm going to the men's home on a, on a Monday morning. It'll tell me how long it's going to be to take, take it. I don't ask it to do that. It'll give me a map if I, like, I guess I, after I get that surgery on my eyeball, how to get home. It'll tell me. Well, it'll have to tell her because it be like, yeah, anyway. So these guys say, they start saying, like, now my point, I guess, was, like, wouldn't you want then, as far as God's concerned, when it comes to tracking you to be able to get through all this stuff called life? I'd be like, yeah, that's how why I got saved, because my life before Jesus Christ and my life now, that's two different lives, man. That's the new creature, old things have passed away stuff, right? You pass from death unto life. Man, I'm really into that. Well, how do you do that, Pastor? What's your secret? Discipline. Huh? Yeah, I'm not the discipline guy growing up, right? I'm the I'm the guy figuring out ways to get cut cut corners. But when I got saved, Lord, Lord changed that. I started growing up, started becoming a man, started figuring things out. And now, believe it or not, I can't believe it myself, actually. God's put me in a position and my wife in a position to actually like give some of that back, like to help other people. And I was on the receiving end of everything anybody else that God brought in my life was able to give me. Whether it was how to act like a man, act like a husband, be the father, being a preacher, all that stuff. How to be an administrator, all that stuff I learned. And now, over the course of time, rather, you'll find that God puts you in a position to be able to give that back. So maybe it's you and him. Maybe it's you and your mom. Your age isn't that big of an issue. The age thing, because it'd be like, well, you know, I'm this age and that guy. It's not. It's how much Bible you give. The more Bible you know, you could be a young person. David was a young person, by the way. And, man, he influenced quite a many people, right? And so that's that. So they go on to say that this Leviathan character is a symbol of God's power of creation and his victory over Israel's enemies. Like, I don't know where you... I read this. I don't know where you're getting at. I read the references of Leviathan. You got to go way out there and try to figure things out. It ain't lining up from their interpretation, right? So Leviathan is a fierce and untamable beast uh, with impenetrable armor, deadly teeth, fire-breathing abilities, blah, blah, blah. And I got that. Because that's what it says here in the text. But, but what is it? And they won't tell you. They don't know. It has parallels to other ancient Near Eastern myths. So it's now, now they're telling you, look, it just kind of lines up with some of these other mythological, mythological creatures there. One of the first references to the Leviathan. This is a the Leviathan. It says Leviathan. Right? Canst thou draw out the Leviathan? It's Leviathan. It's a title, actually. Okay? He, they say, no, no, it's just one of those hippo things over there. One of the first references to the Leviathan tells us that the creature is a female dragon who lives in the depths of the ocean, sometimes referred to as the watery, watery abyss. Wow. The what? Say it again. It's a female dragon. And that's it. And they'll sit there, and you'll, they'll be in churches like you guys are in church. And I guess they have a clicker. The fancy churches have all this presentation stuff. The Leviathan. I don't know why they keep referring to it as the Leviathan. The, the crocodile. The Leviathan was believed by ancient people to be cause of the solar eclipse, right? They believed that the sun was covered because of the Leviathan. He used to eat it for a period of time. That was your... The solar eclipse, it was the Leviathan, the big crocodile. And yeah. The interpretations of the Leviathan, the scholars who see themselves as realists and maybe a little more skittish around the explanations of the Leviathan as a dragon or fire-breathing sea serpent, have suggested that Leviathan was, look, I found it, a crocodile. 
and that the fire-breathing language in Job served more as a hyperbole or a metaphor than literary terms. See? And there lies your, your that's where you got to make that call. So those guys that say that, those guys that would say you can't trust your Bible by just simply reading it. I'm going to tell you, you could trust your Bible by simply reading it. See? And, but I guess the prerequisite would be, like, well, you have to be born again first because I can see that. But what happens is there's so much garbage being presented, then the devil, conveniently, he just hides himself from plain sight and knows that you going to a particular church or hanging around or watching certain videos, it ain't going to expose him because they're looking for a mythological female dragon. And that's not that, right? So here, look, so, so you don't have this, I don't think, but the ESV, the English Standard Version of your Bible, right, in Job chapter 7, verse 12 says, Am I the sea or sea monster? So they use the word sea monster. Your Bible say their way is whale. So when you read, there is that, that somehow Leviathan, a type of Leviathan would be a whale. I'll give you that. Matter of fact, you, you could just rest assured that this King James Bible is so far ahead of Marvel and Hollywood and the way these things are being presented. Because by the time the Marvel movie started coming around, when those things came from the firmament and a the scene there, so there's this scene that, that there's all this ridiculousness, wickedness going, going on in outer space. And the way that thing works itself out, right? So that would be the first heaven here, the second, and then the Lord up here. Um, there'd be water there. It'd be the third heaven up here where God's at. That these things somehow, there's these things that come through the firmament, right? They look just like this, right? And I, I'm gonna kill it, but it looks it looks like it looks like this. And then, uh, matter of fact, it looks kind of. It looks some kind of some kind of demon looking thing, right? These whale looking things. They come they come through Tony Stark, right? And they come through this giant hole in outer space, right? And man, I'm like, wow, that there's that. That's the Leviathan, right? And there you come, and they're half metal and they're half all this stuff, you know. Now you're getting into the image of Daniel, you're getting into his toes and different things, and you're getting into the mighty men of renown type stuff again. The NIV calls it the monster of the deep. So I guess if you're reading the ESV, you call it a sea monster. And you would you if I asked you, uh, Lorraine, you're pretty smart, right? Are there such things as sea monsters out there in the Atlantic? Who would you say? Would you think you think there's a sea monster out there? A good sea dragon out there swimming around? All right, there's not. I'm going to tell you there's not. Because they've been there. Jacques Cousteau, you ever see him? Remember the old Jacques Cousteau on Sunday nights and stuff? I remember as a kid, they'd get that little yellow submarine here. Oh, there's a yellow submarine. And he'd get in there and start swimming. They can't find it. They're not there. So when you interpret Job 7, 12 as the sea monster, then what happens is they're, they're all, all that whole stuff about the devil. And then because you're dealing with individuals that live in the United States of America that don't believe in the devil. There's no devil. And what they're hearing is, well, you just call him a sea monster, right? Well, that's what my Bible said. The Holy Bible says a sea monster. And there are no sea monsters in your Bible. There's Leviathan. You say, well, he ain't in the Pacific. We've already been in a submarine. We didn't find that thing swimming around. And then you'd ask the question, well, you know how many seas are, you know what sea they're referencing? And in your Bible, right? It's called the deep over there in Genesis chapter 1. And we already went over that enough times to know that that's up here. You want me, you want me to color it blue? So we've been into that, and it. We've been into that, and there it is. And those things are way out here. And again, we've gone over that a hundred times. Where you know you say there's no nothing up there like the Bible describes, but you keep calling the things that you get up in there. You say you fly around in as ships, don't you? Spaceships, your astronauts, nautical. And you keep liking unto all that stuff about being water out there. And when you read, just believe what, what the Bible's trying to tell you, then there are literal seas that you probably went swimming in, right? You bring your kids and this, that, and the other thing. You go fishing, go scuba diving. And because you don't have the faith 
to believe what the Bible says. Look at Genesis chapter 1. And we've read this. We went through all this. Look at verse 6. And God said, let... Well, actually, look at verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the... See that term, the deep? That's what that is. That's the deep. In reference in your Bible, the deep oftentimes is referring to the body of water that's above your solar system. There's water, according to this King James Bible, above your solar system. And God's above that. And then it would be like, so why do you keep saying that? How do you believe that stuff... And then God created the waters, but it doesn't say he created this one here. And the verse, verse 2 says, In the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Look at verse 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament, which is your space. We've gone over that. In the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Say, where's that? Above the firmament. Remember, firmament is your space. Right here. So here's your space. Here's your planets and stuff. All this stuff. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. He made the stars also. There's water above it and there's water below it. So when you read about Leviathan swimming around in the deeps and in the sea, you're not talking about the Atlantic. Although there are types of that. And a good type of that, I would say, yeah, a good type of that would be a whale. But your interpretation of it being the sea monster, then you just relegate the devil as some kind of science fiction deal. And I'll show you. They, okay, so let's take a survey. Go out there and ask people what they think about the devil. And then you know what they'll tell you? Those Pew Research people there are saying that, man, everything that has to do with this Bible over the last several years, it keeps dropping. Like they, they stop believing in stuff like that. And then you know you should know, at least from the way we try to present it here, that there's a falling away here, and we'll tell you that. And that would be one of the reasons why it's so very difficult for a church that, that do much of anything for God because there's no power. And the power of, of God is in what he says. And the first time you actually are able to connect that dot like that with God is when you're reading the account of the recreation. When he says, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. And you read like Revelation 19 where the word of God comes out of the guy's mouth, the sword, see? So the power of God is in what he says. So my question today in 2024 would be, do you have what God said? And then we do. I've, we've gone. Mikey's doing a very good job. You know, you'll get an opportunity to pick up on a little bit of that. And my, my goal would, for you is that you leave out of here with the level of confidence that you could read what God has to say. You learn how to read what God said. And then see how that applies in your marriage, in your life, in your workspace, and your ability to be able to tell other people about Jesus Christ. If I'm not confident that that's right, and I'm being told repeatedly that we really don't have a Bible like that, I already have a level of reluctance in me that is in my flesh that doesn't want to talk to people at Lowe's about Jesus Christ. I don't, I, I'm I just, you know, I just want to get in and get my little saw. I saw some stuff up. My wife wants some kind of mechanical device to cut open coconuts, man. So I want to come in and out and do my thing, and that's all I want to do. But I know that Bible's real, and that Bible says we're to do the work of an evangelist. And I know that he that went his soul is wise, and I know if we take up our cross, we're to follow him, and he wants to make us fishers of men, and he that went his soul is and then you have that Bible that I know for sure, whether sometimes I don't always understand it, I know it's right. So this is what's happened. This is where you're at, right? So you won't change all that to some mythological sea monster in the ESV. Uh -huh. And then you're uh, monsters of the deep, right? It sounds like some creature feature movie when I was a kid. And now at 8 o'clock, don't forget, tune into the monster of the deep. Hey! In the NIV, that's what they call that. So the newer, easier... To read Bibles, they've led all these readers into the to the to the land of fairy tales and whatever. I don't know. I don't think so. And that's why when you talk to a typical Christian, you they, you you you're you're having a conversation with somebody and you're asking them questions like, so you know you're saved. You very rarely run into some that that are that will tell you that they are. 
I don't know how many times I'll be at, at BJ's to say, you know, hey, can you tell me how to get to heaven? I, you know, try to do the air and stuff, you know, try to ask different questions and try to just mix it up a little. And, I, you know, once you talk to them, it does turn out sometimes that they did receive Jesus Christ. They did trust Christ as their own personal Savior. They have been born again. They don't know what to say about it. They don't know how to describe it. They don't know what's going on. And there's just like it hadn't been since the dark ages had there been a level of biblical ignorance, right? And then you read Romans chapter 1 to find out where all that comes from. And it's just you don't want to give thanks to God. And you don't want to glorify God. And you don't want to retain God in your knowledge. And then that's why you got everything that you got today. So this is all this fairy tales. What's the fruit of these new vessels? Once you started coming around and saying we got a better way of saying it, and all these Egyptian Bibles and stuff that you got in there and you're pushing into the schools, they'd be like, oh, didn't you hear, Pastor? You're always so negative about America, but don't you know that the, that the school system is in, in, I don't know, New Orleans, Louisiana, I think it was, they decided to put the Ten Commandments back in the schools. But do you not know that there are like two versions of that? And if it's Louisiana, if that is indeed the state that decided we're going to make some bold stance for Jesus or the God or whatever, it's probably because Louisiana is Roman Catholic, man. So that would be the one without the second commandment. They had nothing about the idols. Then there's another state by probably Montana, North Dakota somewhere where ain't nobody there anyway. They'd be like, well, we, we did. We, we put the Bible back. You want, you want it, is it? You want, you want to bet it ain't what it which one it ain't? Because yeah, I bet it ain't that one. It ain't the king of king, it ain't the word of the king. All right, so let me ask since the new Bibles came out, now we get this came about 1880, it's probably the inception of the uh latency in church age. Can I ask you a couple questions? Ready? Ready? Uh how the family is doing? Okay. Uh, how's the crime doing? Okay. Because I like typed in and said, like, who has the most people incarcerated in the whole world? Like, what country is that? Got to be communist something. It's Los Estados Unidos. So how's your, how's your, how's your dollar? Good? Valuable? Oh, he's losing his value. How's your school system? Good? Right? Okay. He's just praying for it now, but okay. Since we got these new Bibles, we can... All right. We, we just relegate the devil as a, a Sigma and the sea monster, right? And puff the magic dragon guy. We don't have to worry about the devil. How them sodomites, they, they're all... Where are they? Like in your schools now and in your libraries, correct? Okay. You heard of a World War One? And now you got, you got one after that? Because the first war was called the Great War. They, didn't, they couldn't imagine after World War. They didn't know the Great War was going to be a numbered thing where there'd be another one after that. They said, wow, after everything that went on over here, there ain't no way. That's the Great War. This is the war to end all wars, I think, the American Woodrow Wilson, right? The League of Nations, man, we're finally going to. And it'd be a World War II. And now you know what they're talking about, right? Three. All right, so now you're in the nuclear age, so this is so much better. Like, we got these new Bibles out and this thing, but but if that Bible, if our Bible's right, if our Bible says, by their fruits you should know them, correct? All right, so here we go. In the belief in God, since all these new Bibles came about, we're trying to figure out who the devil is, and now you start reading stuff like they take out Lucifer. Remember in Isaiah 14, we had gone over that. Do you remember who they changed Lucifer into? It was the morning star, right? And remember who that was? That's Jesus Christ. And you would think that you would show somebody in their NIV that like that fall there, Lucifer, everybody knows who Lucifer is. But the only way you know who Lucifer is without them recognizing, acknowledging that the reason they know who Lucifer is is because of the King James Bible. Because all their Bibles take it out with the exception of New King James. But don't get overly excited about New King James because they're garbage everywhere else. Anyway, so, so now all of a sudden you got the devil telling you, the Christian, that he don't exist, and if you want to know who fell, it was actually the title of Jesus Christ. It was him. It was the, that guy's the one. It was Jesus, right? Remember? So it's the God you gave me, Lord. It's the woman you gave me, rather, right? That's that. And this why there's so much confusion going on in churches. So what about tongues? What about can you lose your salvation? Because this one says you can. This one says we should speak in tongues. This one says baptism saves you. And there's so much confused, the Bible babble stuff that you got, right? It's like the devil in Genesis chapter 11. He's looking at what God did, 
And the devil's got this one world government thing going on. And the Lord said, you know, we got to go down there and confound that because if we allow them to continue the way they are, everything they imagine to do, they're able to do that. Matter of fact, that happened in the garden where we can't let Adam and his bride hear that they're falling, right? Access to that, that tree of life right there because they'll be like forever. They'll be Nosferatu, right? They'll be that vampire looking thing. We ain't going to allow that. And I believe that's where he created those four extra cherub, cherub. Remember who he had guarding the tree, right? Right in the entrance of the garden, it was cherubim, plural. So, yeah, I bet it's there. Anyway, we already kind of went over that. All right. Uh, I'm getting taught this. All right. Oh, belief in God, Satan, belief in God. Here's her, Washington, right? Here's an article. I say, how many people believe in God? The belief in God, Satan, angels, heaven and hell. Those are fundamentals, right? You believe in God? You believe in God? I believe in God. God saved me. His son saved me. He is God. Satan, there's what we're talking about. I mean, this is the lesson on Satan. You got angels? We, we figured the angels out. You got a heaven? Uh-huh. What about the Jehovah Witness in hell? No, we don't listen to Jehovah Witness. We read the Bible. It says hell. It says this, these beliefs, right, these biblical beliefs, they're at a 23-year low in the United States of America. And I don't think Washington is going to change any of that. I mean, but yet there they are. They're all out there in stadiums, and they're all flying flags, and they're flying F Joe Biden flags for all you little kids to the Gallup poll said in the latest update, right? But most Americans still believe in the spiritual entities, okay? The Gallup poll found that 74% believe in God compared to 90% in 2001. So they took a poll in 2023, and so in 19, or 2001, 90% of everybody they surveyed said, yeah, 90%, yeah, there's a God. You went from 90%, now it's 74%. It's dropping. You're going down, brother. You, things aren't getting better. There's no evolution like that. God God bless America. I don't know. Not if you're telling the people that are reading these Egyptian Bibles that the devil and the references there they ain't really real at all. Kind of a female dragon type thing, right? 69% believe in angels. That's down from 79%. 67 believe in a heaven, that's down from 83%. 59% believe in hell. That's almost half, man. So like the half of the people, they ain't no hell, but I know it's coming out of their mouth, and I know it's coming through their television, and that and ain't Sheol, and it ain't Hades. Down from 21%. 58% believe in Satan, that's down from 68%. 58% rather. Today, 2023, that, that belief in all this stuff, and we're talking about the devil. So the, as the years go on, the people that believe these devils, they say, we don't believe these devils. We don't believe that there's one. But you go to a Christian school over here, and they got Pokemon stuff. Where'd you get that? That's called, we said that a couple couple weeks ago, Pocket Monster. So to so the Protestants, right, here are the ones that actually are still hanging on. And, of course, it would be the Protestants, right? And we're not Protestants. We're Baptists, but I, I get it. Who frequent church, right? It would be the Protestants. These are the ones that are still still believing in this stuff, right? Ready? The Protestants, those that frequent church, and look, interestingly enough, Republicans. Huh. And they'd be like, ah, I told you, Pastor, we could be, we can all be political, because you said it on your We're the most likely to express belief in all five of these entities. The smaller majorities of the Catholics and the Democrats also expressed a belief, but more they were very infrequent, right? They didn't, they didn't really follow a lot of that. Other demographic groups more likely believe in all five are the adults, ages 34 and older, adults without a college education. That's interesting. They say, you know, them people that still hang on to them beliefs, like there's a God and there's a devil and angels in heaven and hell. Like, if you don't go to college, you have a tendency to believe in all that as opposed to those individuals that are paying 60 grand a year to say, free, free Palestine, right? From the river, from the Mississippi River to Magic Kingdom Castle there. Get all the Jews out of here. Why? Well, we don't know, but that guy with the knife says, say it. So we're going to say it, right? 
and adults with lower household incomes. Like, so people that aren't caught up in all the money thing, they have a tendency to say, yeah, there's God. I don't know, imagine that, man. Specifically, Gallup said, those making less than 40 grand a year registered higher in the belief than those making over 100,000. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's an amazing book. There's a devil out there, though. All right. What do you do about it, Pastor? You're going to get your pistol out there? You can go find him? No. Me, number one, your pastor doesn't go looking for him. How about that? I don't want to look for him. My dominion is, is, is in my house, in this church. I ain't looking for all that. Say, so you're looking for trouble? Nope, 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 nope. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, interesting about that. It says, the more money you make, the least amount of that stuff you actually wind up believing. And you start, I know what it is. In America, you start trusting other things, see? So church ain't important for us anymore. Well, why is the devil running rampant in America, Pastor? Yeah, been educated out of it. Your schools have dropped that years ago. You're, you're, it's the public zoo system, man. That's America's public education. For, but I'd say it's everywhere. Don't 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 let the don't let a lot of a lot of them other Christian people fool you, man. There's a lot of that going on. First Timothy chapter six verse seventeen says, "Charge them that are rich in this world." See, you know what that charging is? You remember where you heard that before? Second Timothy chapter four when God says, Paul saying, "I charge thee therefore, preach the word." Those charged, we're gonna preach that here. Amen. You say, Pastor, if you preach against money, you guys won't be able to collect much of it. You don't know how much there was there when I first showed up, how much money you had and what you got now. You, you Somebody's doing something, so glory to God for you. All right, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. And man, you ever try to witness the people that are driving all these expensive cars? They don't have a problem with you going down to the men's home and telling those guys about Jesus because they are good. I got a pool. I got a mistress. I got a few concubines on the side. I got this going on, man. I'm good. I don't need that, Jesus. Get out of here, little man. And they are high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. See? Charge them that are rich in this world that they not, they be not high-minded, right? So we preach. I try to tell you, man, it ain't that credit card in your pocket that's going to help you like that. God's going to either supply your needs according to his riches and glory, or he's not. Amen. And he may try you and stuff, but you got a God in heaven that's able to help you with these problems that you got. And everybody just just let go. Let go, man. You know? They knew that on Star Wars. They say, let go, Luke. Use the force. That's a counterfeit, man. Not the force, the Holy Spirit of God, see? Amen. But if you got your Bible, you know you're reading about the Holy Spirit of God. See, when I met you guys, it was like, well, we, we can't have kids. We, we were looking for kids. We want 12 kids, whatever. I'm like, dang. And you heard some weird stuff about what you needed to do to get there. And the only thing I can tell you if I'm going to be your pastor and counsel you is uh, pray about it. And be faithful in what you're doing, right? Charge them that are rich in this world, that, are, that they may not be high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. See, we got a living God. We don't have a dead statue that we worry about, man. We don't worry about it. Who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. How about that? And I, I don't know how many times I've told people, I was so reluctant to, for, to surrender to, the, to pastoring because what I thought my lifestyle was, that, that was going to be changed into. Like I didn't have enough faith sitting on the beach, man, thinking that, wow, well, I, my whole life I'm going to be a hermit. I can't do anything with my kids. I got to be a dad. I got to be able to take them. I got to be able to have a good time with them. I got to be able to do certain stuff. And can I tell you that since I've surrendered, I haven't missed a beat. And I've been able to do all that stuff with my kids and my wife. And we've been having good times with you guys. And we've been able to go certain places and do certain things, right? And it's like God up there in heaven, like he says he is, he's who he says he is. How'd you get to that point, Pastor? How'd you get there? How'd you let go of the reins and trust God? Just do it, dude. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And I heard a pastor say one time, man, the problem with kids is when they're looking at the parents, they hadn't seen the parents in that any anything like that. They haven't seen mom and dad praying and trusting the Lord and the hardships and different things. So they see them come to church, but they've picked up there's two different groups of 
daddy there. That's like daddy in church daddy and daddy at the house daddy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That time to come is everything that's tomorrow, brother. That, that day that you walk out of this body, that day you see Jesus Christ, that day you get the judgment seat of Christ, that rapture, that devil being cast into the lake of fire. Those days here, I'm setting up for that. that, that. I'm, verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. And I'll tell you what's going on in America, Christians. Line them up. They do a survey here. They, all that belief in this Bible stuff is going down, brother. And I don't know why is it going down. Because people that know better ain't doing better. That's, that's why. People that are doing... Gallup has documented sharp declines in church attendance. You know, Gallup, like, like I know what the deal is. But you know what Gallup is telling you? They'll tell you why all that is the way it is. And they say, they document, and I'll tell you what, we keep, we keep facts. We keep numbers. And what we've noticed, that there's a sharp decline in church attendance. And you say, man, I don't know if I've ever been in a church that talks so much about coming to church. Well, Gallup says the reason why they go out there and ask questions about the Bible and nobody seems to believe in it is they, they connected that dot. And I'm telling you what Paul says. And he says, charge them, man. You got an alternative motive and you're dealing with Christians that, that are looking you right in the eye and don't believe there's a devil involved in anything. And they don't believe there's a God involved in anything and they don't believe in the Bible. And they don't believe that the devil is who he says he is or God is who he says he is. And hence, he's a hippopotamus. I don't worry about hippopotamuses coming around me. I don't worry about I don't worry about crocodiles, man. When I was living, now my wife wouldn't come out of the house when we moved to Belgrade. She wouldn't come because there's a canal right there, and our neighbor said, "Oh, by the way, them them alligators, they come out of that cold water, and when you pull your vehicle up, they're cold-blooded animals, the reptiles. They go up underneath there, and now they get warm. They." Sleep under there. So when you come and like ready to get in your car, make sure you look under your deal. And my wife's got like three kids. We've got three kids. They're like, and they eat all three of them in one setting. My wife's like, I ain't come out until you come home. And she would not come out of that house until I came home, right? So the confidence, their confidence in organized religion and religious identification in recent years has gone down. So it's my role as a pastor to try to tell you, look, this Bible is very clear about our obligation. There's a real devil out there. He's Leviathan. He's out there trying to get a hold of us, and it's our responsibility to be able to identify him. And you all have circles of people that I don't hang with, right? And it would be like the mindset of a hired gun, and it's the pastor's job to do stuff like that. And it's not the pastor's job to do a lot. It's a pastor's job to do what a pastor is supposed to do. Well, you don't believe what God says about the devil, so you're certainly not going to believe what the Bible says about what a pastor is supposed to do. And then what happens, like Aaron and I say it all the time here, we just make our own little God up and be like, that's it, the altar of the unknown God, and this is how we do stuff. And we talked about this on Sunday when them Jews, instead of being doctrinal, those rabbis and stuff, instead of being doctrinal about what God says about a certain sum, doing a certain way at a certain time, they say, you know, we ain't got a whole lot of time to read all that. Well, we just worship God. And that's why church after church after church after church, they don't have Sunday schools anymore. All they have is praise and worship. So they got the light shows that look like a Pink Floyd deal or whatever disco thing you've ever been to. And it's like a sports lounge or some kind of club, the way they do their business, man. And that's that's what's going on. And there's, there's a devil that nobody acknowledges. There's a Leviathan out there that's over here. You can't attack him that way, brother. You can't go over there and say, well, you know, my pastor says by in the name of Jesus would take a squirt gun and head down there and take care of him, tie a knot in his tail. As the percentage of believers has dropped over the past two decades, the corresponding increase have occurred mostly in non-belief. So guy says, look, this is the, the Gallup people. I've heard Gallup. They said, look, man, we're, we're checking out your communities. They don't believe in God no more. They don't believe in that stuff. Well, whose responsibility would it be 
to learn about what's going on in the Bible and then tell your neighbor about it. And be like, well, it got to be that neighbor over there. He tells that neighbor, I don't even like that guy. And the Lord's like, man. And we got this little bubble we live in, and it ain't our responsibility until something crazy goes on and we blow up people's phones and we got to make sure all that's prayed up and got to make sure this is taken care of. But you're daily in and out, making sure you understand the wiles of the devil. Paul says you're not supposed to be ignorant of the way he works. But when you ask the average Christian, they say, well, we're not sure if one actually exists. So these, these increases have occurred mostly in non-belief with much smaller increases in uncertainty. Gallup said, this is true for all but belief in God, which has seen nearly equal increases in uncertainty and in non-belief. Where is the promise of his coming, Pastor? Every time you guys come together, where are these people, man, that show up once in a blue moon? And what are they expected to do? How are you expected without spending time in that Bible to affect somebody based on what's written in the Bible? I don't know how you do it. What do you do it? How do you do it? We're going to go street preaching on Saturday. What are you going to do with that? Well, my wife and I are going to be there. I got an idea about other people going to be there. But my responsibility is to present stuff for us to do for the glory of God, not the spreading of his kingdom. Because it seems like the more light you shed on the situation, it keeps these Leviathan things out of here, out of your life. If you, if you submit yourself to God, and you resist the devil, that Bible says he flees from you. Well, we don't really believe he's there. So if you don't really believe he's there and he's some sea monster that's made up, then I guess you're not resisting much of anything. And then you, you are all sitting in front of the TV and you just watch all these witches and goblins and wizards and all sorts of things and people stabbing each other and all this death and demonic and nudity and all sorts of perversion and all the, the crazy Egyptian music and... And then that's why you fair. Come on, honey, let's let's get ready for get your clothes on. Let's get ready for church. They're looking at you like a tree full house, man. Ain't going nowhere. Get out of here. Well, what kind of program do you have for me? Because I need to I need to shook and jive, man, when I'm in church. You can't control yourself long enough. And again, I daddy's with all due respect. Among weekly church attendees, belief in the entities range from 98 percent to 84 percent 98 percent believing in god 94 percent believing in the angels 92 percent in heaven 86 percent in satan 86 percent in hell the numbers are lower amongst those that attend church less with 57 and i get it he says the people that like go to church they get it way more than the ones that don't so I'm telling you, man, when we got opportunities to do stuff for God. All right, let's close with this. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. And then what happens is you saw what I read. I said, okay, so who is Leviathan? Because he's in our book several times. They'll acknowledge that Leviathan is in the Bible. But then they just come up with all sorts of bizarre stuff to explain him away. And then I read to you. God has got a revelation. And you say, hey, you know who Leviathan is in the Bible? Yeah. Who is he? He's the devil, man. Look, he's the Satan. How do you know that, Pastor? I spend time in my Bible. And I ask the Lord, hey, Lord, you show me some stuff. And you know what the Lord wants to do with every one of us in here tonight? He wants to show himself. I want to I reveal. I'm a God of revelation. Paul, write this down so they know that in Homestead. I want to reveal myself to you, all right? You know, as soon as the game's over, man, as soon as the election's over, once we get all these Jesuits back in the Supreme Court, man, we're going to be good. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure water prophecy, right? Where until you do well, yeah, I'm going to give you a little advice, you'll do well that you take heed. you do pretty good if you actually take heed to what's in there. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. So if there's a God, would he be in the light or the darkness? He'd be in the light. Where would the devil be? You do well that you take heed. How's that, Peter? As unto a light that shineth in a dark place, this Bible will help you shine light on dark places. Where? In your life, in your house. You open that Bible, man, see what's going on in the living room. Open that Bible, see what's going on between you and so-and-so. 
You open your Bible and see about what the shine some light on the way you're raising your kids. Or shine your light out, you get along with your whatever, right? Uh, I don't know if it says much about dogs, but probably take care of your dog. All right. Until the day dawn and the day stars arise in your heart. That day star, that's another one, by the way. They say that's in Isaiah chapter 14 is the day star. That's Jesus. Verse 20. Knowing this first, right? This one thing you got to get. What's that? That no prophecy of the scripture is of any in private interpretation. So it's a female dragon, right? Careful. That's private interpretation. It ain't there. It doesn't say that it is, so why would you say that it is? Oh, well, the culture back in such and such a day, you know what they have a bad habit of doing all the time? And the reason why I don't think about think, think twice about doing it is because they're being told there is no final authority. The final authority is the guy that can best read Hebrew and Greek. And then really when it's all said and done, if that don't line up, we'll go to the history books and what their culture and their traditions are. And I say, man, you sound like the Catholic priest I was dealing with. And they'd be like, yeah, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. I will close here, 2 Peter chapter 3, look at verse 16. All this stuff, they're a devil pastor? Yeah. You believe in the devil pastor? Yeah. So you say, you believe the devil coming after you? No, I don't know that he has, but but like, there's footprints. I look on that ground, man, it looked like a big old 800-pound African lion walking around in and out of my life for years and years and years. If not... Well, there's all sorts of spiders and snakes and all sorts of wicked things, man, and these, these strongholds, right? All right, Second Peter chapter 3, look at verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood. Would you agree that there are some things in your Bible that are hard to understand? What are you going to do with it? Well, let's just change it or pretend like it doesn't matter. No, no, no. Because when they do that, that's where you get the sea monster stuff or the female dragons or the crocodile or the hippo. Which they that are unlearned and unstable. So how do you keep from being unlearned? Read and study. Does that work? Does your Bible say read and study? Not all the Bibles. A lot of them take them out, right? Ah, that's that group. And then what about the unstable? Are you supposed to be rooted and grounded? Not tossed to and fro? And the Bible talk about all that? That you're supposed to grow, right? And what happens when this group of people, these unlearned, unstable, quote-unquote, Christian scholars or Christian church people get a hold of Leviathan? What do they do with him? What do they do with a character like the devil? Brother, whatever they're doing with him, man, at the end of the day, you know what they're doing? They're making him seem like he's not really there. And it'd be like, yeah, God said. Yeah, he's, he's actually a female dragon. If, like, if you look at the original Hebrew and the Hebrew Bible, we looked at it like this and like this and like this. And it's a female dragon. We all know there ain't no dragons. It's a sea monster. We all know there ain't nothing going on like that. Although Hollywood seems to believe everything that King James Bible keeps saying it is. Coming down like that, like coming out of, right from the hole from outer space, huh? Where'd that big old silver whale come from? Where that Leviathan? That's the type of Leviathan, man. That's a big that, like Marvel knows what that is. Pastor so and so, your kid knows about Marvel. He knows that that's that. All right, let's close. He says, as unlearned and and unstable. What do they do? They rest as they do the other scriptures. What's the end result? To their own destruction. And then the church is closed, and the people are out of church. They don't win souls. They don't. They don't refrain from anything. They don't fight anything. There is no. There is no nothing coming out. So what do we do, Pastor? We we occupy. We fight to do fight of faith, and we're gonna keep swinging. And we pray for each other, and we'll try to help each other where we can. But ultimately, everybody has free will. Yeah. Okay. So that's why sometimes it's like herding cats. Then, right? Uh huh. Let God be true, and every man a liar. Father, bless the night. We thank you for it. Pray for uh, trial and mercies. Thank you for being good to us, Lord. Plead the blood on all this. Thank you for the ability to be able to read that Bible, learn a few things tonight, and uh, be with Manny's mom. Help her. Help them. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, but...